Hi, welcome to the sixth uh, week lesson of uh, Ignite the Spark series. And in this week, we are going to talk about the Spark modules or what makes Spark, right? So let's jump into the lesson and try to see how Spark is made up of different modules and what is the purpose of each and every module. Let's start. Hi. So one of the interesting fact about Apache Spark is that it is modular. See, if you look at the industry today, then there are different types of analysis or different kind of workloads that the industry handles. And Spark comes bundled with a lot of modules to handle each of this task. So PySpark is basically a Python library which you can download and install. And, and when you install PySpark, you will be getting different modules along with it. Now let's have a look at what are the different styles of workload you can handle and what modules in Spark will help you to do that. For example, you will be able to build batch and streaming pipelines using Apache Spark. So this is very common in the industry that you might individually build batch and streaming pipelines or you may even combine batch and streaming pipelines. Now, if you are working on batch pipelines, then you can use the Spark SQL module. So Spark SQL is a built-in module that comes with Spark where it allows you to represent your data in the form of data frames. So there is a very popular uh, API called data frames. So if you are already coming from the Python background, then you should be familiar with data frames. And, and the idea is same. Basically, the Spark data frames were inspired by the Python pandas data frame. It allows you to represent your data in a row column structured format, pretty much like a table, and you can do batch processing. So you, for example, you can read a CSV file, and, and write your queries on these data frames using Python, Scala, Java, uh, are these languages. So you can very well do batch style of processing using the Spark SQL module. And there is another module that is called structured streaming module. So this allows you to build streaming pipelines or real time pipelines. So in the earlier days, the uh, module was actually called Spark streaming. And now it is called structured streaming. And there is a huge difference and advantage when you talk about structured streaming because the whole idea is to simplify the workload. Now imagine you want to process some real time data and people might be thinking, oh my God, it's a lot of job. Like I have to handle the data in real time and then I have to manipulate the data. Not at all. If you are using the structured streaming uh, module in Spark, then you can represent real time data in the form of data frames and you can write real time queries. So it is just like batch data. The only difference is it is, ha it is happening in real time. So using the uh, uh, structured streaming library, which allows you to re represent real time or streaming data in the form of data frames, we call it as the unbounded data frame or the infinite data frame, you will be able to write streaming queries on real time data. So Spark SQL, if you want the module, if you want batch processing, structured streaming, again, built on top of data frames, if you want real time or streaming data processing. Now, if you are somebody who is coming from the SQL background, pure SQL background, you want ANSI SQL queries, you're talking about data warehousing, you're looking for dashboarding, reporting, uh, then you can again leverage the Spark SQL module and it supports the SQL dialect as well. So there are two ways to work with the Spark SQL module. Either you can use the data frame API and you can write the queries in your preferred language like Python or you can use the pure SQL style and you can go for SQL analytics. Now that's not all. One of the primary reason why Spark is super popular today is that it allows you to run massive machine learning algorithms at scale. So we have a module called Spark ML. And if you are a data scientist, then you can perform exploratory data analytics on petabytes of data seamlessly using the Spark ML module. And again, you may be probably wondering, this might be something that I need to learn extra. Not at all. Obviously, the machine learning algorithms are there and that is something that you might have to learn if you have a learning curve, but the basic representation of data and the way you perform EDA all works on data frames, the same data frames we discussed in the Spark SQL module. 
and then if you are a machine learning uh, expert you can train machine learning algorithms and uh, you, you can run them at scale you can do predictions or use all using the spark ml module so the idea is whether you are using spark ml whether you are using you know batch streaming data sql analytics the base representation of your data comes from the spark sql module and it can be as a data frame or a table if you're talking about sql analytics so this is what we say about spark that it is modular so all these are different modules you know spark sql structured streaming ml which comes by default with spark and depending on your use case you will be able to use any one of them now that's not all end of the day if you are using any of these modules and, and develop your logic, they will be executed at a lower level using the Spark Core library. So we have a library called Spark Core and that is the one which executes uh, all these code that you have written at the higher level modules. So imagine you are doing some SQL style of processing and you wrote a SQL query and that will be converted into low level, uh, 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 what you say, Spark core library compatible code and it will be executed by the Spark core library. So Spark core library is also responsible for, I mean, it is responsible for running your code. It is also responsible for handling uh, things like sp fault tolerance, for example, uh, it ensures that uh, the code runs at scale in a distributed cluster. All these are handled by the Spark Core uh, library. You can directly interact with Spark Core library and write the code, but uh, that approach is not so popular today. So in the modern day, people prefer directly representing your data in the form of a data frame and then taking it forward using any of these built-in modules. Hi, so that was the end of the sixth lesson in the series. So in case if you're somebody who is watching this video for the very first time, then check out the complete playlist of, uh, you know, Ignite the Spark series so that you can get benefited from learning every aspect of Spark and also pour in your valuable comments so that we know how do you feel about the series, maybe about a specific video. And we will be wrapping up the series in the next week. Remember, this is a seven part series. So hold on and just wait for the last video in the next week. Thank you.